Yogi, who is temp- who's temporarily lost the way, and is then then become situated to continue on the spiritual path. So, the next three were this and the next two verses, sixty-three, it's the forty-three, forty-four, forty-five. They describe the onward trajectory for both forty-one and forty-two. So both the seekers can actually uh, move onwards on the spiritual path by what is dis- by the way that is described here. So, so the first trajectory, of course, is that the yogi who has practiced some spiritual life but has substantial re- practice remaining goes to heaven. enjoys the whatever desires were distracting the seeker goes to heaven enjoys there and then uh, after enjoying in the heavens then returns to the earth and takes birth in a shuchi naam shrimatam ge in a brahmanical family or a wealthy family and then continuous spiritual practice towards perfection as is described in this verse or the same can apply to the second category that is the so seeker who has practiced a lot and has just some practice remaining so is directly born in a devotee family now tatra tam buddhi samyogam labhate paurva dehikam tatra tam there that means in the next birth buddhi samyogam buddhi samyoga so samyoga is contact or meeting so the word samyoga and viyoga often go together in the gita or in general krishna has used the word viyoga viyogam yoga sangitam dukkha sanyoga viyoga yoga sangitam so the contact when the contact with misery ends that is called as yoga so here krishna is talking about not viyoga separation but sanyoga union so buddhi sanyoga that means the buddhi is acquired once again what buddhi that would be by which one can practice spiritual life by that intelligence by which one understand that there is more to life than this life than the materialistic way of living that there are higher pleasures available there are higher pleasures beckon beckoning us and that we should seek those higher pleasures and by seeking and attaining those pleasures we can actually gain lasting fulfillment that would be to be able to see beyond the temptations of the world the buddhi to recognize that the enjoyable objects of this world are not actually all that enjoyable that the pleasures in this world ultimately disappoint and even betray us so when we understand the tatra tam buddhi samyoga tam that sut samyoga comes in labhate paurva dehikam and how does this buddhi come up paurva labhate one gets it from paurva dehikam from one pa- one's past body so now we may wonder how can the past body is already gone and destroyed mm, it has either been cremated or buried or 
it has perished in some other way so how can the past body give something so actually it refers to what was labhate porode kam doesn't mean just directly that it's got from the past body but it is carried over from the past body through the subtle body so there is a dynamic give and take between our subtle body and the gross body usually so we think when we think of the body we often think that it refers to the gross body that is generally true but along with that there is the subtle body also and that subtle body is also material so whatever we do with our gross body that creates impressions in our subtle body and <coughs> conversely our subtle body also creates impulses by which we usually act unless there is some other forceful impetus uh, and this very persuasive strong reason motivation to not act according to those impulses so therefore here uh, there is mm, when the so when a seeker when a yogi practices spiritual life in a previous life then uh, has practiced at that time that practice has created impressions in the subtle mind subtle body so just so the impressions can that are created in the subtle body can be positive as well as negative the more we do say devotional activities spiritual activities those create positive impressions in our subtle body and those positive impressions help us to practice spiritual life steadily so here krishna states that actually when a seeker uh, when a seeker has practiced spiritual life in a previous life purva dehi kam in a with a previous body that practice of spiritual life has created spiritual impressions in the subtle body and that subtle body is what is that's uh, the subtle body of course has as one part of it intelligence so the intelligence has become spiritually inclined spiritually disposed and that is what is the that is what becomes reaccessible now buddhi sanyogam there's contact with that intelligence labhate paurva dehi kam labhate man gets it by paurva dehi kam from man's previous body so it's not something that when we say it's got from the previous body it is not a literal getting or taking it's not a literal getting that someone that the previous body suddenly wakes up and then stretches out the hand and gives something to the person in the new body no it's subtle that that's the legacy of the previous body which is passed on to the person in this body through the same subtle body which has continued on along with the soul from the previous body to this body and the subtle body has been uh, impressed the impressions have been created impressed is not we are not using impressed in the sense of being uh, externally enamored but impressed literally in terms of being impressions having been created in the subtle in the subtle body which are now accessible and which impel the person towards practice of spiritual life yatate chatato bhuya and then after that yatate and starts endeavoring again bhuya again again why because the endeavor had been made in the previous life also and now the endeavor is being made again yatate chatato bhuya samsiddho kurunandana samsiddho siddhi is perfection samsiddhi is complete perfection so yogi strives for perfect complete perfection by the practice of yoga by recognizing the the importance of spiritual life and the insubstantiality of material life something that yogi is able to recognize because of having the buddhi which has come from paurva dehi kam which has come from the past body so some so now yet yet tejato so even then 
Even in next life, the soul has to endeavor. Yet a thing. Without endeavoring, the soul cannot achieve perfection. Yet a thing. So that means the serious thinker thinks that if I have to endeavor, then why reserve? Why why let the endeavor be postponed to next life? I have. There is no shortcut to spiritual realization. There is no shortcut to attaining love for God. There has to be a gradual <coughs> purification which takes place and that involves some amount of uh, austerity, some amount of pain. Pain in the sense that there are things which we enjoy doing but when we understand that they are counterproductive for our spiritual health and our spiritual growth, then we we choose to abstain from them. There are some sacrifices which we have to do, and we become ready to do them when we understand that they will benefit us in the long run. So this endeavor is essential, and by this endeavor we move towards perfection. Thank you.